Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to the final dungeon, to the final battle of Exile 2 Crystal Souls. So I did a little alchemy here and made an extra resurrection bomb. I don't know that I'm actually going to use that, because I don't think I can cast Raise Dead or Resurrect in battle mode. But it's still neat to have them as backup, I guess. Anyway. Um, Telemane is not quite as full on spell points because I did identify one of the loot items I picked up. Not the horn, which I suspect will summon more soldiers, but the wand that I found in Garzad's chamber, I believe, is this wand of death. I was kind of hoping for another wand of nullity, really. So, I could abuse the long wait function a little bit more to restore Telemain spell points. But I feel like just hopping in. Okay, where are we now? Suddenly, the room is filled with whirling blades. And monsters, apparently. Okay, that's a few demons, and a golem. Trouble, what arrows do you have on you right now? None, I think I just used my last magic arrow. Arrows of Light it is. Okay, so we've got a Hakai, a Mung Demon, and a regular Demon. I feel like I've had worse in this very dungeon. The walls of blades are kind of annoying, though. Sometimes I remember that Scorn has level 5 priest spells and what all of those spells actually are. Oh hey, Garnet is going to join us for the final battle. If Trouble can take down a Hakai, I am going to be so happy. last arrow not do the extra damage? And are burning arrows going to do any good? Well, not if I can't damage the thing. Also, Garnet, is this really the time for you to be purring on me? I'm in the middle of a great big fight, you know. Nice, I killed the regular demon with one hit. Go, more one. It seems Simarine has a ring of fire resist or some such equipped, and boy, am I glad of that. Ruby charm. Also good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just golem is left now. Yeah. 
and mostly not taking too much damage from all the blades. Well, that wasn't so bad. Much as I would like to explore every single corner, blade walls are annoying. Writing in gold letters, Throne Room of Supreme Commander Garzad. Mm-hmm. Exhausted, covered in blood and ichor, you finally reach the inner sanctum of this fortress. It is the throne room of Garzad, the chamber from which the war on your people is waged. At first, you don't see anyone there. You are horrified by the possibility that, after all your fighting, your foes may have just fled. Then you hear laughter, mocking laughter, and lots of it. Slowly, bizarre and powerful creatures become visible. They are sitting in the chairs, staring at you with contempt. Sitting at the head of all of them is Garzad, the stunted, twisted archmage who has slaughtered so many of your people. His eyes are wild with anticipation. He is overjoyed to be able to battle you at last. His protective spells cloak him in fiery energy. You stare at each other for a long moment, sizing each other up, getting used to the fact that you are finally face to face. Then, Garzad makes a short chopping motion with his hand, and battle is joined. Well, at least the rune didn't blow up in my face. Onwards! Oh, that is a lot of nasties. Whole lot of nasties. Blessing and extra haste. This is going to get interesting. Hopefully not the oh god oh god we're all gonna die kind of interesting. A quick experiment. Garzad is undamaged by my halberd and resists the flame. Lovely. Bad time for some summons? I don't know if that's going to do me much good, but let's see. Gotta use my spell points for something. Seriously, Garnet, I'm getting slaughtered and still with the purring. Yeah, 
something tells me that I'm going to want Telamine to steal as many spell points as he can in here. come in here with a somewhat better strategy. No, not that save. That one. Because I can. Oh. Oh, goodness. Apparently there's enough loot dropped by enemies in here that I can't drop any more. Now I gotta redo my alchemy. Probably don't need to redo it, but what's gonna do me more good here? Resurrection Balm or the Ember Flowers? Probably neither, really. Can't carry another item. Eh, why can't you combine potions? Whatever. Anyway, Morwen has an artifact that may prove useful. The Shielding Crystal can give me temporary invulnerability, but only one character at a time. I'm going to give that to someone who is a bit closer to the front lines, whether she should be or not. Save again. Okay, preliminary room of monsters dispatched. Scorn is a little bit the worse for wear. Everyone else is mostly fine. And 
let's see if I can spawn this while being somewhat better blessed and hasted. Battle is joined! Rah! Let's use this shielding crystal. Okay, still in reasonably good shape. Possibly because of the invulnerability on a couple of key characters there. Okay, so who's more dangerous? The Hakai, the Rakshasa, or the Lich? I honestly don't know. Well, the Hakai isn't going to be hurt by my flaming halberd, nor is the Rakshasa. So I guess I'll go smack the Lich around. One down. Ravage enemy. Well, at least I got a kill in before I started dropping dead. This is a trick that I read about in another playthrough of this game. You can kind of fake out the blade walls by going directly into combat mode and you get one free turn's worth of movement. Major Blessing is a little more cost-effective on the spell points compared to Bless and Major Haste. I was really hoping that would work. Good 
good enough. The best, not the worst. I wonder if I should keep Kazola on healing duty. There's just so many enemies in this final room. Okay, let's do a little bit more prep work this time. I already gave Scorn the shield and crystal. Darn it, dang it. <sighs> Don't mind me, I'm just faffing about before getting back into the fray. Ah, so the enemies are already spawned in there. Potentially useful. Okay, so who do I want using that shielding crystal? Of course, I can only reach so far with these area of effect spells. I've got two liches cursed and slowed, and an empire dervish, and a demon, but not the Hakais, and certainly not Garzad. Garnet, you are not helping. Going to come out of combat moment combat mode for a moment. Get a little more uh, fireproofing on. And now I'm farther away from the door. Possibly a good thing if I'm not as easily in range of some spellcasters. Let's try that for a change. Burning arrows, better than nothing. And 
Telamine, you hang back for a little bit. I don't want you dying in the first round. I'm not dead. Unfortunately, ne neither is anyone else yet. Throwing out curses when available? Don't mind if I do. Ooh, you know what? From here, I can throw in a friend or two. I wonder how much damage a vampire could do. Waste your time with summons. Scorn can put put out quite a lot of damage on her own, but right now, I'd rather focus on keeping Simmery not dead. Hmm. Telamine. Ah, yes. Is invulnerable. Good use of... that crystal. Ravage enemy. <laughs> okay, I think the vampire I summoned got killed off early. thinning out the ranks. Why don't you get back here? <laughs> In the relatively safe spot of being surrounded by three physical attackers. I could try doing some mind dueling against the Hakai. I could try doing some shock waving. Thank you. 
Something I want to try here. Nope, that's not going to work. That only works in the remake. In the Avernum 2 series, I believe Garzad can be damaged by Demon Slayer because of plot reasons. Not so much here, which is problematic. And more wins and vulnerability wore off. That's not great. Trouble's still invulnerable, so I don't have to worry about his poison right now. Oh, thank goodness, Simmerine isn't dead yet. Ooh, Simmerine has a strong invulnerability potion. That'll help! Also, let me see if I can prove a thing. Horn of Warriors summons at least one soldier. I'm sure they will be entirely useless here. But I can summon them. Ooh, I can use a Wand of Nullity. That will keep Garzad relatively neutered until Telamane can get in range for a mind duel. Why is the Rakshasa not taking any hits? Oh, oh there, fancy a mind duel. Ooh, that was effective. Second round of Mind Duel on the Rakshasa was less effective, but he's dead now, so I don't care. Now let's move Simmerine over to where she can do the most damage. Uh, I guess I'll take care of the Basilisks as the more dangerous summons. do I want you to do? Do I have any fun spells I would like to use? And yeah, can't cast Resurrect in combat, so um, probably not going to see that in this game. It's like the- just consider it like the character editor, except I don't have to save and quit and reopen my game. I can disease everyone if I don't mind them dying really slowly. I could cast a guardian if I 
don't mind having my own invisible ally. I could cast Ravage Spirit to get rid of the Hakai faster, but then what would I have Simarine do? He could cast Avatar again. Okay. Garzad? Mind duel. Okay. Enemies are targeting Telamane. I cannot allow I cannot allow that. Oh, there's a black shade. Ugh. Okay, where is the black shade? There's two black shades. At least. Also, Telamine taking that damage means he's not invulnerable anymore. Huh. Get ready for more mind taking! Yeah, Garzad is really bad at this mind duel business. Please stop with the killing Telamane. Really don't need to worry about the zombies, they're just easy targets. Oh, darn it. Maybe we will get to see Ray's dead used in this game. You know, I could have cast protection at any time during this battle, and I didn't.
Don't I feel silly? Oh, Garzad actually took a little bit of damage that time. Not that it's doing me much good at all. Just look at that spell point total go. Also, I thought there was a barrier here that required quick fire. Maybe that was in another dungeon? I don't remember anymore. Kazal and Trouble are the only ones in real danger of getting roasted here. Morwen is the only one who is not invulnerable, but she's been doing pretty much fine, and has Martyr Shield. How you doing there, Garzad? Good gravy, that's a lot of health points. And magic points. This is gonna take a while. Garzad. Spent more spell points summoning things. It'll give my fighters something to do. even go up above 150 spell points. I think 150 spell points is the usual maximum that you can train to. I know 200 is the maximum hit points. Uh-oh. Invulnerability starting to wear off.
Garzad, if you could kindly die faster. Maybe I should do a revive. I get up above 200 spell points. Holy cow, I can. Actually, let's toss out a big gun. Holy ravage. Garzad resists. Holy Scourge. Yeah, no. Let's continue getting Telemain drunk on power. Huzzah! Garzad crumbles, overcome. Your attack may have been fatal. Maybe not. It doesn't matter. In his moment of weakness, he loses control of the intense defensive magic he wrapped himself in. The delicate balance of his spells disrupted. Their power tears loose. In the end, the strength of his defenses and the force of his paranoia proves his undoing. As Garzad's shields fly apart, he is torn limb from limb before your eyes. As his anguished dying scream echoes through the halls, you hear his few remaining servants teleporting away. Soon, you are alone in this chamber, trapped with nothing around you but blood and walls of blades. But then there is a chiming noise. You look around, and see the disappearing form of Rentar Irno. Behind where she was, there is an opening in the wall. Perhaps escape is possible. You look at Garzad's corpse. His brilliance will no longer serve the Empire. His awesome power will no longer send terrible foes against your people. Their army has lost its head. Now, Perhaps the body may soon follow. Congratulations! You have slain Garzad, commander of the Empire forces in exile, and completed the third victory condition of Exile 2! Cool, 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 cool. And gained a whole lot of levels. When the Empire invasion came, it seemed that exile was doomed. It seemed impossible that a few bedraggled rebels scuttling about in caves could defeat the mightiest nation your world has ever known. And alas, your nation may still lose. The forces the Empire has in your lands are still mighty, highly trained and well-equipped with steel and magic. You are strong and skilled, but even you cannot defeat a whole army single-handedly. This day, however, something has changed. Your actions have shifted the balance, so that both sides of the scale have equal weight. The Empire has allies, but now so do you in the Vanatai. The Empire has more forces than Exile, but now that their teleporter has been destroyed, they will have great difficulty getting them supplies and reinforcements. The sides will now be much more even. Finally, though the Empire has more wizards and priests than Exile, their leader has been lost. Their greatest mind has disappeared from the Earth. With Garzad's genius gone, their edge over you is greatly diminished. Acting alone, through skill, strength, and unbelievable persistence, you have done the impossible. 
your small band has single-handedly shaped the course of a war. Exile owes you an awesome debt. You have handed the Empire a devastating punishment for its arrogance. And really, what more could you have hoped for? Congratulations! You have, through great intelligence and endurance, completed all three victory conditions of Exile II Crystal Souls. Well done, indeed. And yet, the story is not truly done. Your people are still trapped in the underworld, and now there is yet another race to share the limited space of the caves with. The Vanatai are strange and alien, and they still have not taken their revenge on the Empire for the theft of the Crystal Souls. No, all is not settled with them. Yet. But such mysteries can wait. You have struck your blows. Now, at long, long last, is the time to rest. Time to rest, and time for Scorn to get back up. Scorn is dead, so... I can't do anything because Morwen doesn't have enough spell points. Too bad I couldn't have trained her in mind dueling as well, huh? Ugh. There is one thing I can do about it. Oh, I guess I should do something about Telamine here. Okay, I needed, what, 25 spell points for that? 25 for Raise Dead. Only 20 for Resurrect. What? Well, let's use that, that one, then. Scorn lives! Scorn gets all her stuff back. And also some bones I don't need. Potion of Bliss and Healing that I never used. Okay, what was that about a hole in the wall? There it is. Allons-y! Thank you, Rentar Yerno. And thank you, Tower of Magi, for giving me a guest room. And thanks so much to all of you still here at the very end of the game! And yes, this is indeed the end. As far as I can tell, no one has any new dialogue after Garzad is defeated. I guess he really is meant to be the absolute final boss of this one. Anyway, whether you're new here or you followed me through a few series, I'm glad to have you here, and I hope you enjoy coming along on my adventures. If you'd like to see more from me, please hit the subscribe button. You could even do something wild like sharing or commenting. Or don't! I'm not your boss. Until the next series. Have a good one, everybody.